Welcome to Living the Smarter Science of Slim, where we provide a scientifically proven lifestyle for long-term health and fat loss by eating more and exercising less, but smarter. Eat smarter, exercise smarter, live better. I am so ready for that. Hey everyone, Jonathan Baylor and Carrie Brown coming at you with another Smarter Science of Slim podcast. And, and actually, it's a very special day. It is. It's a special day because Carrie and I have not been just the dynamic duo in the studio for, I think, the longest time ever, actually, since we started doing this. Is it really you? Is that, who is this blonde woman to my left? Oh, can I touch you? <laughs> I don't know. Is it all it's cracked up to be? Yeah, it is, people, let me tell you. <laughs> um, well, moving on. Moving on. Uh, so, so, hi, Jonathan. How are you, Carrie? It's great to be back. It is great to be back. I've in been the studio running with you. around all sorts of places, New Orleans, and it's been fun. But I missed you. I know. Well, and I think our listeners need a little bit of reassurance on both sides. One, Carrie's been traveling, but has not forgotten about our listeners. You can be assured of that. Absolutely not. And I've been on all these podcasts with other people. And that doesn't mean that I've forgot about our listeners or forgot about Carrie for that matter. Are you cheating on me? <laughs> so absolutely. We are, we are here and we are excited. Yay. And we're going to do just a bunch of great questions. Uh, these are questions from the Smarter Science System support group from a while back. And we thought it would be useful to share here on the podcast. I don't even know what months we're in right now. <laughs> Where are we actually? So this question has to do with chia seeds versus flax seeds. And let me give a little bit of context here. Chia seeds and flax seeds are both recommended in the Smarter Science of Slim because they are excellent sources of omega-3 fats. They're also great sources of, of fiber, and therefore they're very sane, and they're also very nutrient-dense. However, they are very different when it comes to how you use them, when you use them, all that kind of fun stuff. So Carrie, tell us a little bit about chia seeds versus flax seeds from a cooking and eating perspective, and then I'll do some science. Chia seeds are way more fun. <laughs> Just in general? Yes. Because you can paint them on things and they grow? <laughs> No, they're just, when you mix them in stuff, they swell up and they're all kind of like, kind of like tapioca. So they kind of have a a kind of a comfort thing going on that flaxseed is more like wheat germ. Mm -hmm. And wheat germ never got me excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, well, but to be, uh, to make sure I understand though, right? Like you can do things with, from a baking perspective, like with milled flax seeds that you wouldn't use chia seeds for, for no, example. No, no, all my muffins that you love yeah, yeah. Uh, all have chia seeds in. Oh, okay. and, and to be clear, Carrie is correct. It's pronounced chia, not chia. I actually told Carrie she was wrong, and then she, I forgot how you pr demonstrated, but you actually proved that it was yes. chia seeds, and yes. I stand corrected, so. Yes. <laughs> it's okay, this is the first time for everything. So, no, I'm actually <laughs> using chia seeds in in the muffins and bake stuff now. Okay. Um, And that's working out really well, so. Okay. I actually... Yeah, for lots of reasons, chia seeds. I like chia seeds better. Yeah, they're certainly. I mean, it's they're they're different tastes, and you can eat chia seeds whole. Yes. Whereas you cannot. I mean, you could technically eat flax seeds whole, but your body isn't going to process them. They'll just right. go right through. Right. And I've actually started grinding chia seeds because when they swell, if you soak them whole, so they just swell, you actually get you know little lumps like mm -hmm. tapioca. Mm -hmm. But if you grind them fine enough. Then and use it kind of like flour, then you don't necessarily get that texture. Nice. So they're nice. becoming more usable. The more I use them, the more fun things I find to do with them. No, that's cool. And and also the um, from a nutritional perspective, flax seeds are slightly higher per calorie in the omega threes. But I wouldn't get too hung up on that if you like chia seeds. Excuse me, chia. What is it? <laughs> chia. Chia. Okay, so I got it right that time. <laughs> um, the uh, both chia seeds and flax seeds, the type of omega threes they contain in them, there's actually th like essentially three. This is a simplification, but three types of omega three fats, and the types in both chia and flax seeds are not the best kind, meaning our body doesn't really process it that well. So uh, they're both good, like they're they're inexpensive, they're convenient, they're delicious, and they are good sources of omega threes. Don't let the fact that flax seeds are slightly higher deter you from using chia seeds because if you were really, really like dialed in and wanted to do everything perfectly from an omega-3 perspective, you'd want to be getting your omega-3s from seafood. 
that is going to be the purest or most bioavailable source of omega-3s. We should all move to New Orleans. Yes. Seafood paradise. Ironic That's all that I ate for living in Seattle, days. <laughs> you're talking about a place where you you have to go someplace else to get good seafood. It, yeah, well, sorry, it was just a little aside there. You mentioned seafood, <laughs> and I've just been ramming seafood down my gullet for the last 10 days, which was fabulous. A bit extremely sane. So chia seeds and flax seeds, they're both delicious. They're both good options. Chia is probably a bit more convenient because you do not need to mill it. And with uh, flax seeds, one thing you do want to be careful of sometimes is if you mill flax seeds and you leave them out, bad things are going to happen to them. So if you're going to mill your own flax seeds, use them immediately after milling them. Uh, I would not recommend buying milled flax seeds and letting them sit out unrefrigerated. That's just bad news all up. But yeah, you can. And I don't store chia in the in the fridge, but I do store flax seeds. So, you know, with all the other things you've got going on in the fridge, that's another slight bonus in my little world for chia seeds is that they don't need to be refrigerated. Absolutely. Awesome. 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 All right, well, that's chia versus flax. Carrie, do you have any closing comments on chia versus flax? We love them both. <laughs> Yay, chia versus flax. Oh I, oh, I just closed the tab that had the other question on it, but I saw it very quickly. <laughs> we just talked about chia versus flax, and now we'll talk about casein versus whey. Oh, clueless. Jonathan, <laughs> Pass. <you're> up. <laughs> Pass. Well, you actually do know a little bit about casein because the UMP stuff that I give you for, yes. to try with your recipes, yes. that's casein based. Okay. And you, I think hopefully you will notice that that actually bakes a lot better than if you ever tried to bake with whey. Okay. This weekend, I've been gone for so many weekends now, I've forgotten how to switch my oven on. However, <laughs> that is going to be rectified this weekend, lovely people. So if you're Woo! on my Facebook, you'll, the oven you'll, be is seeing, back. you'll be seeing all sorts of baked wonders flying across your computer screen. Baked sanity. Yes. I love it. Well, and Jonathan's ice cream that he asked me to make 300 years ago, and I still haven't done yes, it. Yes, and for folks, <laughs> friends on Facebook who are like, where's the recipe, where's the recipe? Please post, where's the recipe on Carrie Brown's wall. <laughs> this weekend, people, I will be doing ice cream experiments. Sane ice cream experiments. It's qu it is quite delicious and quite promising. And in fact, when this airs, it will probably already be posted, which is good. Yes. So, I love it. But back to the subject at hand, <laughs> casein versus whey. So, a little bit of background. Both casein and whey are milk derivatives. So when you heard the little, uh, I don't know if it's called the nursery rhyme, Little Miss Muffet sat on a tuffet eating her curds and whey. Whey, the whey they're referring to there is actually the whey we're talking about when we talk about whey protein supplements. When you take a whey protein supplement, it's just a dehydrated version of the whey in milk. The other primary form of protein found in milk is casein. So they're both milk proteins. The biggest difference, they're both very, very good for you in the sense that they're complete proteins. They have very high levels of all the essential amino acids, all goodness there, and they're very affordable. They are very different in how you should use them though. Whey protein is a extremely fast digesting protein. This is an oversimplification carry, but for example, like if you were to drink a whey protein shake right now, like that protein would be in your bloodstream and like done its thing building stuff 20 20 minutes like okay. it's just boom and that's great like for example if you're about to do some smarter exercise and you need to get a shot of protein into your body to ensure optimum um, muscle protein synthesis way before your workout and way after your workout phenomenal but generally we want to have a for lack of better terms less aggressive foods foods that slowly filter into our bloodstream so our body has time to process it with the exception of immediately before and immediately after our workouts so generally speaking, casein protein, if you're just going to drink protein shakes throughout the day in place of food, which is always the second best option, food is always your uh, first choice, using a casein-based protein supplement is probably preferable. But don't throw away your whey protein if you if prefer the taste of whey better. I don't think anyone is going to not actually, I know none of us will fail to reach our goals because we're using whey protein versus casein protein. But if you have the choice, get some whey protein, use it before, during, and after your workouts. And if it's not involving a workout, use casein and preferably use whole foods whenever possible. Okay. Cool? Cool. And it just if folks are curious, because I frequently am asked this, what whey protein and casein protein supplements do I personally use or recommend? Do you ever wonder that, Carrie? No, because I know. <laughs> well, Carrie, I'm trying to make the show engaging here. 
<laughs> yes, I Jonathan, I, 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 I totally am curious. Please tell me. <laughs> Look, Jonathan, you've known me long enough to know that I just am incapable of lying. So if you ask me a question, I'm going to be honest. Fair. Okay, well... And our I, listeners love I, me for that. They love me because I'm real. I am going to tell our listeners. <laughs> so, so generally, and again, quick disclaimer, Jonathan Bailey does not work for any of these companies. I'm not getting paid for any of these endorsements. Um, so know that straight out from the gate. If you're going to buy supplements, the best supplement company I have ever found in the world is a company called Beverly International. You've never heard of them because they do not advertise in magazines. They have been around since like 1967, and they're very, very popular in the natural bodybuilding world. They're also very, very expensive. Um, but if, you, if you're just going like, what's the best out there? Beverly International and their website doesn't look like anything special because they don't specialize in marketing. They specialize in producing uh, very, very high quality nutritional supplements. They sell a whey and a casein-based protein. But if you are a little bit more budgetarily conscious, uh, whey protein from a company called Optimum Nutrition has served me very, very well. I believe served Carrie very, very well. Yep. But uh, from a casein perspective, there is a product called UMP, which stands for Ultimate Muscle Protein, that Beverly International puts out, which if you can afford it, to me is like this wonder powder. It You can bake with it. It's it's spectacular. Like if you you mix it with... Eggs. That's Jonathan's baking, though, not yeah, Jonathan's baking. Jonathan baking, Jonathan baking. But if you want to make, you know, Jonathan baking, it is like the staple of Jonathan baking, and it is quite delicious. So, so we'll put baking in in quotes. <laughs> baking. baking. <laughs> uh, no, that's that's good. That's actually good. I like that. So, if you like baking in quotations, it is a good resource for you. <laughs> Fair. You missed me, didn't you? I did. See? No, that was actually well played. Well played. I, I think I'm blushing slightly. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. So <laughs> next question is, oh, Carrie, you're going to like this one. What about these zero calorie health waters <laughs> such as, well, I'm not going to name any oh, brands. Oh, don't get me started. If you've listened to all our podcasts, but they you have know what no I think calories in them and they're water, Carrie. What do you think about them? I think it's terrible. <laughs> I think the world's gone mad. I think all marketers should be, food marketers should be lined up and shot. So, oh my goodness, 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 goodness. <laughs> or maybe attempted to rehabilitate first. It's and then very it difficult to walk when you're on a long road trip and you walk into a, into a garage and for, for gas. Garage, is that the right word? No, uh, gas station. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've been hanging out with another English person all week. I I'm, guess. I'm, Did you take the lift when you went to the garage? We did. And I have some bangers and mash afterwards? No, because we were in New Orleans eating fish. <laughs> I, it, yeah, my, yes, I've become very British over the last little while. I'm going to have to re-Americanize myself. When you go in a gas station to get water and you're faced with 42 different brands and pretty much of none of water. them of water is, <laughs> and none of them are really water. Yep. It, it's just, it, it just makes me angry. Fair, no, absolutely fair. And just the, the, the official party line is, so drinking water is fantastic. Drinking water and green tea is really what we should be doing. Right now, if you're drinking soda and your choice is continue drinking soda or drink something with artificial sweeteners in it, switch to the artificial sweeteners. It's going to be better for you than soda. I would urge you to then try to move to a beverage which has natural non-caloric sweeteners. So something like xylitol, erythritol, or a stevia, and then wean yourself off of those onto water. a water or green tea, uh, just because in some ways you're stoking that sweet tooth fire. But, but again, I'm just going to be, if you're going to, if you have a sweet tooth and you're either going to eat a Snickers bar or a zero calorie Sobe flavored water, take the zero calorie Sobe flavored water. So Pick your battles, but technically anything with these artificial brain toxins, which is essentially what a lot of these artificial sweeteners are, it's difficult to recommend drinking them because they're really not helping you. Will they kill you? No. Will they? I don't. It's hard. You know, if it, just use your, use your best judgment. I, I'm not going to tell you to drink them because they're not good for you, but they're not nearly as bad for you as what most people drink. So That's another reason I've missed you. What's that? My body's dehydrated because I drink way more water when I'm podcasting <laughs> with you than I do when I'm not. Jonathan, you're a very good influence on me. Oh, excellent. Well, Plus, you go and get it for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
I'm a sort of a a, a wa- the water boy <laughs> during our podcast. Water boy. You're very I have to good at I, it. I have to keep Carrie very, you know, she's not, she, you know, you hear on the podcast and it's like, oh, laugh, laugh, laugh. But if I don't, bring, Carrie's one of those people, she's like, oh, I asked for Brita water and this is Aquafina. Take this back to the kitchen, Jonathan. You like my Carrie British accent? I am accent not there? South African. <laughs> I am British. <laughs> that was quite a good South African ever. <laughs> so, Carrie. You're going to, I think you're really going to like this next question. It's not really a question. These are more subjects, but, or maybe exclamations if we get really excited. Woo! Butternut squash. Oh. Do you not know about butternut squash? I'm British. Oh, no, and I'm thinking of spaghetti squash anyway. I'm well, let's British. talk about spaghetti squash. I have no idea. You don't know what spaghetti, a spaghetti squash, squash either? Squash is. <gasps> That's all you, babe. Let me tell you about some baking now, <laughs> Carrie Brown. Okay. <laughs> this is baking with a capital B because it's actually legitimate. So, spaghetti, you really have never used spaghetti squash? No, I've never eaten it either. This is a moment that I think all of our listeners should just savor. I'm British. Because we don't have these weird squash in Well, you're, you're in America now, sweetheart, no. so you better get used to spaghetti squash. I, I, I'm working up to spaghetti squash. <laughs> all right, well, for those... I'm still trying to get past the kale. Oh, fair, fair. For those who are familiar or are not familiar with spaghetti squash, please let me introduce you to this delightful dish, which, when baked is essentially turns into a spaghetti. So it's a squash, but you cut it long ways, and you got to use like an ax because it's very difficult to cut. Then you bake it, and you hollow it out a bit like you would hollow out anything else. I don't know, a pumpkin, maybe. Anyway, and its innards turn into this like wonderful vermicelli-type pasta consistency, and really anything you can do with pasta, you can do with spaghetti squash. Like we made spaghetti squash with sane meatballs the other day, and it was spectacular spectacular i even think it's better than pasta because it's consistency you can cook it al dente you can cook it so it's more well done like it's just a wonderful wonderful noodle substitute have you been reading up because you got all these cooking terms flying out of your mouth what's going on <laughs> what have you been doing secret stuff while i've been missing <laughs> yes, I'm not, you know so you're Carrie. cheating on me with other podcasters <laughs> now you're doing weird things in the kitchen without me <laughs> This, no, this, I had made... Explain yourself, th- <laughs> Explain yourself. I have made spaghetti squash with my brother uh, in Chicago many moons ago. I told you about that when, when my friend Scott was here. We made it. This has been going on for months, Carrie. I think, I think you've just and been in I'm denial. I'm the last to know. I think you've just been in denial. <laughs> but yes, folks, spaghetti squash is extremely sane, and it is a wonderful, wonderful option. And if you have children and you want to get them involved in the kitchen, it's actually really fun because it's, it's fun to scrape it out of its little shell and it's I'm gonna have to go and buy some now and it's it's super affordable you buy one spaghetti squash and it makes this like giant mound of and it's oh, glorious I like it's that a giant vegetable. mound of food I like that idea no total and it's and you will this is the crazy thing too is like if you have a serving of this sane spaghetti squash with meatballs it doesn't actually seem like you're eating vegetables in reality you probably just ate three to four servings of non-starchy vegetables which is glorious yay so okay I'm one more, one more, Carrie, one more for this week. And are you ready? Yes. Because it involves bikes and it involves smarter cardio. So this is something you know all about. I thought you were going to say something I like then, which would not have been true. <laughs> but know about, yes. So this question has to do with, can you do smarter cardio on a regular bike, not a stationary bike? Meaning like one you just pedal outside. If you have a steep enough hill, yes. Yeah, I mean that, yes. Basically, I mean, there's... Because that's the resistance, right? The hill is the resistance. Te- yeah, so technically, te- if you could, yes, if you could find a hill steep enough and you were willing to pedal up it and then walk your bike back down it and then pedal back up it, you technically could. Remember, smarter exercise is just all about finding resistance, which is so challenging that you can only do it for 30 seconds. However... Um, the safety and practicality of that are not super, super high. So can you do it technically? Yes. Can you do it practically? It's going to be a challenge. Right. That said, if you bike to work in the morning, biking to work in burst for a minute, go slow for two minutes, burst for a minute, slow for two minutes, is smarter than biking to work at one consistent pace. Right, even if you don't have a hill. Exactly. Just that flurry of activity. Exactly. So it's all about... Short windows of higher intensity, of course, the 
higher the intensity can become, which at some point is only possible if you increase resistance because you can only move so fast before you hurt yourself. Higher intensity equals more hormonal change equals better results, but something is better than nothing. So, And you know, I also feel like the if you're really in that kind of 30 seconds of, of the resistance bit, I wouldn't want to be having to worry about was a car going to hit me at the same time. Oh, I mean, exactly. I, I just, I'm just, my brain is just screaming. I wouldn't want yeah. to worry about being knocked over at the same time. Well, and that's the key thing too, Carrie, is we're doing these things to be healthier. So the principle of first do no harm should always be in the front of our mind. And if pedaling so fast that you're going 25 miles an hour on your bike and then you hit a pothole is not first doing no harm. Right. So just keep that in mind. Right. Just another, I, I just love it when you give me reasons to not exercise. I love that. <laughs> no, not to exercise in that way. <laughs> in that way. In that way. Well, folks. Was that it? That was it. Are we for, done? For this week. But we will be back next week. It was good to be back. It was good. It was good to be back. We're having fun. We're living the smarter science of slim. We're eating more. We're exercising less. I'm off to make ice cream and eat spaghetti squash, apparently. But smarter. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to say ice cream, people. Say ice cream. Say ice cream. And general sanity to the listeners for this week. We wish you well and we wish you much sanity. Yes, we do. And we'll see you next week. See ya. See ya. Wait, wait, don't stop listening yet. If you like the podcast and if there's other ways we can help you, please join us in the Smarter Science of Slim support group, which is freely available at the Smarter Science of Slim website, smarterscienceofslim.com. There you'll find all kinds of free recipes and success stories and just all kinds of fun stuff like how to help your kids go sane and just great community content. And just one last thing before you go, if you wouldn't mind heading over to iTunes and up onto Amazon.com and leaving us a review and then going over to Facebook and liking us, we would hugely appreciate it. 